Since it's election time, I thought I'd see what nuggets of wisdom I could find in uh, this book. Well, handouts. I got these when I was still a student in UP. I was walking through UP shopping center. And so in some classes, they leave the handouts and the notes in Xerox shops. And people can just go and photocopy it if they're part of the class. And I happened to see these being photocopied. So I got a copy even if I wasn't taking that class. So this paper uh, contains info on how uh, indigenous people, some, some indigenous people groups, how they, how they govern themselves and how they choose uh, their leaders. And historically, indigenous leaders have been very effective in governing their peoples because they were able to resist all of the colonial change and stick to their uh, indigenous practices. So here the... The above definitions highlight the distinct character, capacity to resist change, traditional territorial possessions, and the determination to preserve the identities and territories of indigenous people, peoples, and communities. In accordance with their distinct culture and traditions, they have produced leaders who saw them through the various stages of their history and struggles as communities and peoples. Indigenous leaders are symbols of power, authority, order, and justice. So this paper describes leadership among the Bontok, the Ifugao, um, Kalinga, the Mandaya, the oops, Mangyan, the Manobo, the Maranao, and the uh, Tiboli. So yeah, so maybe we can learn a bit from... Uh, uh, our indigenous peoples and that will help guide us in our own elections. So who are the leaders of the Bontok? The Bontok are an indigenous peoples that live in the Cordillera, so they are Igorot. Uh, they live in the Upper Chico River system. Bontok society is divided into villages, which are then subdivided into wards with an ato and an olog. The ato is the building where the elders of the, that subdivision meet, while the olog is a dormitory for young girls of marriageable age. So the decision makers of the village are called the amam'a. So they are old men who by virtue of seniority and experience in life automatically form the core of village decision makers. However, there are requirements to be an amam'a. Uh, here are the four requirements. So one, you have to be articulate. Two is you have to be fair in making judgments. Three is you have to be a holder of a good war record. However, this is not practiced or required so much anymore because there aren't any more uh, tribal wars in modern times. And also you have to be wealthy. So if there is an issue between the families in an ato, then the amam'a of that ato is enough to uh, settle the case. But when there is an issue that uh, deals with the entire village, the amam'a of the different atos in that village will form a council called the Intugtukan. And they will have deliberations in order to decide what to do. So something our politicians should learn is... Uh, when an elder sits in the Intugtukan, he works for the interest of the entire Ili village and not just the ato he represents. So like our politicians should look at the good of the whole Philippines, not just their province. However, because of class division in Bontok society, the rich are the ones who end up taking leadership roles. Uh, the rich are known as the Kachangyans. They are regarded with respect and have a say in the council. Another important uh, person is the Pinakarsu or Inanak. So the Inanak serves as a mediator or go-between between villages. So usually it's a person who marries into another village. So there's that personal connection. 
So in the event of conflict between these two villages, the Pinakarsu serves as the mediator. So who are the leaders of the Ifugao? The Ifugao are part of the Igorot. Uh, they live in Ifugao in the Cordillera. So according to this paper, the government of the Ifugao is very informal. They don't have any strict institutions. Uh, uh, government is based more on prestige and influence. So there is social stratification based on wealth where the rich have more influence. So the apex, so the wealthiest are the Kandangyan, the wealthy aristocrats. Then you have the Natumok, which is families that have some land. Uh, then you have the Nawatwat, or very poor, who have no land. And at the bottom are the slaves. There are some key figures though, such as the Mombaga and the Mongkalun, which act as arbitrators between cases. So the Mombaga uh, deals with civil cases and the Mongkalun uh, with criminal cases. So they act as the judges, prosecutors, defense counsels, and court record for cases. They are responsible with the rendering of the offers and payments. And if someone breaks the truce, the Mongkalun is expected to be the one to wound or kill the offender. And then there's the Mumbaki, which is the native priest. So he is the spiritual protector of the community in war and peace. Their role is as a doctor, exorcist, astrologer, historian, and they are also experts in genealogy. And they also hold the rules of the native society. They are imbued with the knowledge of the time-honored culture, customs, and traditions of the rich Ifugao heritage. So the leaders are the Mombagas, the Mongkalun, the Mombaki, and members of the Kandangyan class. But as previously said, it's not by institution but just by influence and prestige. So there it's informal and based on kinship obligations. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So the rich Ifugaos proclaim their leadership in society, if not in actual governance, by decorating, but by decorating their homes with skulls and horns of carabaos butchered for family feasts. Well, that, that sounds more fun than elections. <laughs> so it seems to me that their government has a clear and strong judiciary, while the legislative and executive parts are more informal and just based on prestige and influence. So who are the leaders of the Kalinga? So the Kalinga are another group in the Cordillera. So while the Kalinga society has a rich and poor class, uh, according to this paper, it's not as clearly stratified between the rich and the poor. So any of the Kalinga, no matter how lowly his family origin, can rise to community prominence and leadership. There are lots of ways a Kalinga can rise in society um, by industry, economic stability, personal charisma, physical prowess, fair play, the ability to talk sensibly with some sparks of wisdom, and discretion. Also, in Kalinga society, there is no single leader. Uh, there are a lot of leaders and they cooperatively share the responsibility of leadership. Their leadership is generally cooperatively shared and never wielded by a single person. So I guess that's good. It keeps the leaders in check. In one of the subgroups, the leaders are called pangats. And the qualification to be a pangat is wealth, lineage, uh, family connections with other pangats, personality, cooperativeness, fairness, oratorical ability, a record of having settled cases of controversy between kinship groups, and above all, the most importantly, a reputation as a dangerous man who is said to be feared by his own village mates. So to become a pangat, uh, you just have to be recognized by the community rather than by social status. And also, being a pangat is not limited to men. Women can also be pangats. So this sounds consistent to uh, earlier where anyone can rise. So as long as you show that you can be a good leader, then the community will eventually recognize you as one. Just like in the Ifugao, there are also um, go-betweens. Here they're called the uh, Mangi Ugod. Uh, a pangat can also be a Mangi Ugod. So they take charge in settling disputes. 
to be a mangi ugod, you have to have experience in dealing with people, political maturity, a strong family backing, and once again, to be a renowned warrior. Another very important leader is the Mangdonsi Budong, who is the person who holds a peace pact. Peace packs or bodongs are very important to Kalinga because that's how their uh, laws are created through treaties between two tribes. So the Mangdonsi Bodong is a very important role. They are the ones who negotiate the reestablishment of peace. So being a Mangdonsi Bodong paves the way for future recognition as a pangat and if not yet one to further increase their prestige. This position can be inherited. For more videos on pre-colonial and indigenous Philippine culture, folklore, and mythology, subscribe to my YouTube channel and look for me on TikTok.